I've had the back of the barrel guitar in my head for a while, just haven't had time to get to it. All these Jack Daniels half barrel tops have a really cool back that has been charred. And so as I was cutting these up, I left the backs to the side and I actually grilled with them because they have all that whiskey soaked in them. And as I was playing around talking to Justin, I said, let's do a back of the barrel guitar. I realized that the back dried out sufficiently and the top became pretty hard so it wasn't flaking off. And I glued up a bunch of tops here. So all the different slats from the barrel tops, I cut and sized them, ran them on my joiner, got them flat, and I was able to glue up a top here relatively quickly. One of the issues with the Jack Daniels guitar is that each slat has to be glued down by itself. I can't line these up all and glue them, they'll sort of slide. But I've got enough room here to clamp these, get them pushed down together, and a pretty quick top without having to do a whole bunch of work. So I've got my parallel clamps and a couple smaller clamps to keep the edges together. And once I did that, clamped it down, I've got a top that I can put on a piece of core wood and do a top and bottom back of the barrel guitar that has a really cool vibe from the Jack Daniels whiskey barrels. Once we're glued up, We'll etch this out with a pencil, rough cut it on my bandsaw, screw it in, and then get some glue. This is just wood glue. And we'll scrape it in. We're gonna glue the back first, and then we'll glue back on the top. So I've got both plates all set. Push this down, make sure the glue adheses to both the top and the back. Screw it in. Take this over to my wine press clamp clamp it down and let it sit. So I've got enough room, make a slight adjustment so that it's on both sides. I lightened up the top by taking it over to my drill press and drilling out some holes. We'll just come back with some wood glue again and glue this down. This is a poplar core that I'm gluing the torfied or flamed barrel tops to. So we'll just get some glue, spread it out, screw this in and instead of running screws through it I just take four little screws and make sure it doesn't move when I again drop that back onto my wine press clamp that you've seen in my other videos. So I only let this sit for about two hours on the wine press clamp and I wanted to pull it off before the glue really hardens on the side and I've noticed it gets a little bit sloppy on the edges so I come back with my chisel, clean this out so I don't really have a whole lot of glue residue sitting on the body. So we'll take that top back over to the bandsaw, cut out, and trim it so I can then take it to my router and route it so that it's flush. So the Sears bandsaw, Craftsman bandsaw, has given me some pretty good life. It's right down in the basement can do all my quick work. Then we've got my router, my table router with a top bearing bit and I will just trace where I cut this out and since the body was already routed previously we can just go ahead and clean that up real quick. And then I've got my one template which I use for all of my routing on the top. This makes my life a lot easier. I change out routers. I keep the top Clamp down, I've got some Craftsman clamps on the top that actually hold it down in a couple of cutouts, and then I've got one clamp on the bottom. This is my DeWalt 621 router, and it's loaded with a bushing bit. So I've got, I think, a three-quarter bearing on it, and I think a half-inch bit. And this does all of my rough routing, and then I'll come back with a top bearing bit and get it all cleaned up. So this allows me to keep all the workpiece clamped on here and just change out the routers and the bits. What I love about this router is that all of the chips exit through the router base pile on there and it keeps it nice and clean so I don't have dust flying everywhere. It's one of the big problems with router. Really happy with the way dust is extracted with this router. So this is my top bearing bit just a half inch wide with I think a three quarter cut. 
I've also noticed in terms of wear and tear, having all of this set up like this, I don't wear out as many bits as I used to do when I would just use the half inch, three quarter bit for everything. Here I've got a little bit more longer life. So we'll get this all cleaned up, pop off the template, and then finish out routing the pickup cavities and the control cavity. We route here a little bit deeper with this bit so that I can get the wire channels cut with a long drill bit. So we'll come back with a little bit of a longer drill bit. I think it's uh, I don't know 16 inch drill bit and use this for the humbucker wire for the single bridge wire. That will be good to go here. I also use sort of a boring bit to make it just a little bit wider, get it nice and clean so I can push the wires around. And we'll move to the neck. And with the neck, I already have all these necks built. So I went through and did a whole bunch of different necks a while ago. I didn't film that. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this Angelus black leather die and get it to match the vibe of the body. So we'll get some black leather dye and stain the neck. Again, doing two coats to get the color to even out. And I'll have a sort of black neck, black hardware, black vibe for this guitar. I'll get all matched up. So I'll make sure I get this in. All the little fret nooks and crannies, glued the frets in. So I want to make sure that I've got the die to penetrate properly. And I'm just going to go right over the white vintage dots because I think it's going to just look better. We're going to come back with some wipe on poly. A wipe on poly, I really like on this guitar. I like the feel of it. It's a very thin finish, but it feels very smooth. It dries very hard. So we're actually going to put on three coats of the wipe on poly. Here I'm just going to show one coat. But we did this three times. And then we came back and wanted to just scrape off the side marker dots. This I was having a little bit trouble seeing. So I'm going to leave the top of the fretboard alone. But I'm going to just scrape the dots on the side to get it to look a little bit better. So we'll then go ahead and mark where the neck is going to go, the neck holes. We'll drill this out on the back side so then I know where we're drilling into the, for the neck. So after the three coats that's dried nicely, we'll get, I think it's a 332 drill bit and drill the pilot holes for the screws. We'll then take the body out to the garage and actually route out the roundover. So this is a quarter inch roundover. We just want to make the guitar a little bit easier to play with that roundover. We're going to come back with my propane flamethrower my propane flame and we're going to char the poplar sides and rechar where I did the round over. That way we'll get a consistent look, consistent feel across the whole guitar body. I was using oak for the Jack Daniels guitars and it still was pretty heavy even though I lightened it up. I wanted to use poplar and oak. I thought that was a good combination. Once we rechar the sides and get everything cleaned up, we need to come back and then re-sand it. So I'll come back with 240 grit sandpaper and just clean it up so there's no edge, nothing that gets caught. It's clean and is really just a, a way to get the body smooth, smooth to the touch. I was surprised that on the top there were really no sort of cracks or anything breaking apart. So once the alcohol dries, it sort of crystal, crystallizes or does something to the top where that top is in pretty good condition. So we just wanted to get the sides and where I did the round over all clean, make sure it's not going to snag you anywhere. And probably spent maybe 25 minutes doing this. It actually is one of the larger chunks of time outside of routing the pickup cavities. So went back and forth a couple of times here, sanded, cleaned it up, sanded, cleaned it up, and wanted to make sure that it got the right vibe. 
one of the last things I did then for the sides was I came back with some wipe-on poly and just wanted to put one little coat of wipe-on poly on the sides because it really helped match the vibe of the top. And so if I put on three or four coats, it wouldn't look right, but one coat sort of gets it to match the top pretty good. And that way, where I charred, I'm not going to get any sort of flaking off or any burn on your hands as you're playing with it or on your clothes. So in part two, what we're going to do is assemble this, play it and test it and see how it sounds. And then we'll get it out to Justin Johnson. We're going to start selling this as an alternative to the Jack Daniels guitar. So thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next vid.